Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this solo video, the day it was a Saturday. And during that afternoon, two teens were waiting at a bus stop in a town in northwest England. No one walking by would have suspected a single thing. This is a quiet town, nice place to live. These teens were waiting for someone who thought they were friends, and the three of them would walk together to a nearby park. Only about an hour later, emergency services would be called in a panic. Little did anybody know that these two teens had a kill list, and they were only just getting started. This had been something they had worked on for months and months, becoming an all-consuming obsession. Please subscribe to see new videos every week. Now, let's give it a go. The town of Birchwood, it lies in northwest England, right? And it's about halfway between the cities of Manchester and Liverpool. Not doing the accents this time. It's a pretty small old place, very suburban. Houses, shopping centres and some parks there. A very leafy community. A place known for its mist at night. Kind of spooky. Seems to have this whole kind of autumnal thing going on. By all accounts, it's a nice and friendly place. A lot of parks in the area. And that kind of comes up again and again. North of the town lies a park, Colchith Linear Park. Linear because it's more like a, like a trail than an open park. And it was on the afternoon of February 11th, 2023, that a 999 call was made from that park. Two people, Andrew and Catherine, they were a husband and wife. They were walking their two dogs along this trail when they came across in the middle of the woods, near a bench and some stairs, a teenager lying on the ground, just, just lying there beside the stairs. They called emergency services at 3.13pm, saying, I'm in Colchith Linear Park. Somebody has been attacked. We have seen some of the attackers run away from the body. She's very hurt. She's halfway down some stairs. She's bleeding heavily. There's blood on her legs and on her back. She's really hurt. We thought it was a dummy at first. I don't want to touch her either. I don't know if she's alive. She did twitch before. It's an absolute mess. Catherine, who was the one who made this call, she described the two people she thought could have possibly done this. They were both wearing dark clothing with their hoods up. It seemed to be a boy and a girl. And as they were walking over there, they had seen them up ahead in the trail. She would say that she thought the boy was leaning down as if he was putting a leash on a, on a dog. And then when they got closer, he was actually leaning over the body. And they'd seen him walking away. Not She would describe him not as sprinting away across the fields, but lolloping away, which is... Weird as all shit. It would soon be determined that the girl on the ground was 16-year-old Brianna Jai. Brianna was born in November 2006, the daughter of Esther and Peter. Brianna attended Birchwood Community High School and was known as a very kind person. One thing she loved was TikTok. She had over 30,000 followers on the site and loved making her little videos. These are like the only heels I have and they're too big for me. I'm like... I won them through a wedding, and then I flew up everywhere. Like, they're very, very big. Like, I don't know how to show how tall they are. Brianna was transgender, and she was fearless about it. That's a word that keeps coming up again and again when you read about Brianna Jai, that she was fearless. Very, very brave. But not in that, you know, kind of condescending, oh my god, you're so brave. Like, that kind of way. Just very confident in who she was and who she wanted to be. She lived with her mom, Esther, her older sister, Alicia, and stepdad. Her parents, Esther and Peter, has separated, and growing up, Brianna didn't have a huge amount of contact with her dad, but recently, they had reconnected. Brianna was a very funny, outgoing young woman, really gregarious, larger than life, always ready with the zingers. But then, behind the scenes, the Brianna she didn't show off, she had mental health issues, self-harm, eating disorders, anxiety issues, what made it hard for her to leave the house a lot of the time. Other than school, that was it. Brianna's anxiety meant that in school, she would spend a lot of time in the inclusion unit, which essentially inclusion units in schools, it's for students who maybe need a little bit of like extra help, maybe a little more vulnerable, that kind of thing. Students who need a little bit of extra time who maybe aren't kind of right for bulk classroom learning and Brianna's anxiety included her in the inclusive unit. Brianna was there and in November 2022, a new girl joined the class. That was 15-year-old Scarlett Jenkinson. She had previously gone to school in the next town over, Colcheth, but she had transferred because she was kicked out of her own school. 
She actually had been kicked out of a couple of schools. The reason she'd most recently been kicked out was that in September 2022, she had brought um, some weed gummies uh, into the school, and they were like, not far like that. A thorough background check on Scarlett was done by the school. She was described as a quiet and anxious girl, fairly normal, daughter of a tradesman father, and home ec teacher mother. No red flags. That's because the red flags, which kind of probably should have been raised, weren't raised at Birchwood High School, which would probably have led to them turning her down. Um, you know, the school would have to accept her if she was kicked out of the previous one and was being transferred. See, <laughs> Scarlett had previously poisoned a 13 year old girl with said weed gummies. She had given her a couple of these gummies, didn't tell her what they were. This young girl then had to be hospitalized. Charges were never pressed against Scarlett, though, in relation to this. At the school, Scarlett didn't have any close friends and told other students she was involved in Satanism and believed she was a witch. Allegedly, she had tried to recruit other students to take part in some good old blood rituals, which you gotta love. <laughs> I think they, though, politely declined. Over time, she became friendly with Brianna, and it seemed like a normal relationship. They began to hang out more and more. However, texts would show that, you know, in December and January 2022, 2023, Scarlett became obsessed, absolutely obsessed with Brianna. Like, not in a romantic way, just in a I can't stop thinking about this person kind of way. She would text a friend of hers, Eddie Ratcliffe, how, about just how obsessed she was with Brianna. Scarlett and Eddie had been friends in Colchester School. Eddie a loner, but both of them were always described as very, very smart. They had been friends for about four or five years by this point. Now, Scarlett herself, she had a fella. She did have a boyfriend, but the things she would share with Eddie were not the kind of things you would normally share with your boyfriend unless your boyfriend is an absolute psycho. I'm talking serial killer obsessions, torture obsessions, murder, blood, all that. All that good stuff. Scarlett liked Eddie because he had an interest in the same murderous fantasies that she did. Eddie, he liked Scarlett because she could help him socially and introduce him to girls. Scarlett was mostly obsessed with the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, but she was also partial to Jeffrey Dahmer, how original, and Harold Shipman too. Her diary's pretty messed up, jet like little facts she had about each serial killer. Reports say that in late 2022, she also downloaded an Onion browser to, well, browse the dark web to find videos of people being tortured and killed. Though there's plenty of that on like the regular ass web, so you don't need an Onion browser to see that kind of content. But yeah, she was just obsessed with murder films, horror films, blood. One of her favorite movies was Sweeney Todd. She was like obsessed with like the knife he would use to, I don't know, I've never seen a movie, but chop people up or something. She would like Mitch off school all the time and just stay at home watching really gory uh, movies and I guess just becoming, you know, big fan. On February 11th, 2023, Brianna had been home alone. Her mother and sister were out. And she texted her mother, telling her she was heading out and getting the bus to go meet her friend, Scarlett Jenkinson. Her mom, Esther, actually thought that was kind of strange. See, Brianna had never gotten the bus alone before her anxiety kind of prevented her from doing it. So I guess she was, oh, cool, good for you. Also, the fact that she was going to meet Scarlett was also just a little bit, oh, because Brianna's mother, Esther, had never met Scarlett. She'd heard Brianna talk about Scarlett all the time, but she had never met her, and they hadn't, hadn't even been friends that long. But Esther, you know, it was a nice Saturday in February 2023. She didn't think too much of it. It was a beautiful sunny day. The bus journey took about 15 minutes to get to Colchester. And there, Scarlett Jenkinson was waiting for Brianna. It was just going to be a, you know, a cool-ass hangout. But there was someone else waiting for Brianna too. Someone Brianna did not know, had never met before. That was Eddie Ratcliffe. The three of them headed off together for a walk, heading to the Colchester Linear Park, which is about a mile from the bus stop. As they were walking, they were seen by a few folk, just seemed like regular teens. And they were. Until they got to the park, a disused uh, rail line. And then as soon as they were out of sight of other, other folk, that's when they struck. 
Less than an hour later, Brianna was found by a husband and wife walking their two dogs. She had been stabbed 28 times in the head, neck, and body. It was a horrific scene. When the investigation into this began, the police quickly, they, they like almost like immediately swooped in on Scarlett Jenkinson because Brianna Jai had texted her mother saying, guess who I'm going to hang out with? Scarlett. Then investigating Scarlett, they quickly determined her links to Eddie Ratcliffe and were going to go for him too. In fact, both Scarlett and Eddie were arrested simultaneously at about 7 p.m. the day after the murder. Scarlett, this is what I've got to say. Yeah. At this moment. Because the information I have received, you are under arrest on suspicion of murder. Obviously, you are under caution, so anything you say is getting recorded. Okay. Confirm me being suspect is because like I was swatted at the scene. They were like, how, like, how come I'm a suspect? Pardon? Like, how come I'm a suspect? How come you're a suspect? Because I'm the last person at the scene. Or is it? I don't know. All all the information I've received is you are a, a suspect. Okay, for the murder. Yeah. You Eddie? Yeah. Eddie, you're locked up suspicion of murder, alright? Okay. You don't have to say anything, but you may harm your defence, you don't mention when questioned, so you later line in court, and if you do say we have evidence, do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. I can't explain it. No, listen. Right, listen. Do it all on interview, alright? Yeah. You're going to take it to the court, and you'll be interviewed about it, they'll ask you questions, alright? Yeah. While the pair were being questioned by police, their homes were being searched. Eddie Ratcliffe lived with his parents and siblings. As I said, always a loner, and he was diagnosed with autism, selective mutism, and a high level of social anxiety. He spoke when arrested, but as the judicial process continued, he spoke less and less, except with and through his mother. His family, again, oh, it seemed perfectly normal, perfectly, like, whatever. This is, you know, one of those cases where you talk about killers as, like, you know, nurture versus nature. And this is a very good example of they both came from extremely well-liked, normal-ass families who seemingly gave them everything they wanted growing up. And they still, you know, turned out not great. Eddie's dad, a fitness trainer, his mother, an artist, and Eddie was the middle of three children. Top student, never in trouble. The family would go skiing, boating on the lakes, and he was planning on studying microbiology in university. It was in his house the police found a hunting knife, and bloody clothing. CCTV showed Eddie leaving the scene on bus, wiping blood off his clothing. After the murder, they just both went home and chilled out, you know yourself. Then of course, being completely shocked when the police showed up to Linear Park and word began to spread around town of what had happened there. Later that evening, Scarlett wrote on social media, Brianna was one of the best people I'd ever met and such an amazing friend, a very touching tribute to the girl she just brutally murdered. At the same time as she was posting that, she was texting Eddie, asking him, oh, hey, are you worried? You know, that we might get caught by the police? And Eddie said, we probably will be. And Scarlett was replied, we'll be grand, don't worry about it, the police around here are shite. Scarlett had wanted to keep a part of Brianna's flesh as a token of the murder. In one text she sent to Eddie, she wrote, can I keep some things, a couple of teeth and an eye? and said she was excited by what she had done. She also revealed that she had previously tried to poison Brianna, but it hadn't worked. It just made Brianna violently ill. Brianna's mother, Esther, had come home one day and heard Brianna, like, puking her guts up in the bathroom. Br Esther, Brianna's mother, was actually worried that Brianna had tried to do this to herself. In fact, if the poisoning had worked, Brianna's mother thought that if it had worked, she might have just assumed she had done it to herself because she had a history of self-harm. If that had worked, they could have gotten away with it. Scarlett and Eddie had lured Brianna to the park that day under the pretense of trying out a bit of the L, you know, devil's dandruff. And as Brianna was sitting on the bench, she was attacked. Scarlett stabbed Brianna first, then she passed the knife to Eddie, who stabbed her three times. Scarlett then took the knife back and did the majority of, of the damage to her. The reason they killed Brianna is multifold. Uh, one of the reasons was that Brianna was transgender. Another was that she was kind of the one they simply landed. They had a kill list. They had a kill list of Brianna and then five boys on it who they were planning on making their way through. It seems like Scarlett was the ringleader. 
all of this. A lot of people would say that Eddie was just manipulated, he was an easily manipulatable person, and that, you know, she had this plan, she wanted it. Other classmates would say they were aware of this list, and were telling their parents, so hey, listen, you won't believe it. She's got a kill list. Nobody took, took it seriously. They decided on Brianna because they thought she would be the easiest. With Eddie texting, I want to see if it will scream like a man or a girl. Scarlett wanted to kill anyone. Eddie was more interested in killing Brianna specifically because she was trans. The police went searching Scarlett's home, they found her diary, and found pages detailing the plan to murder Brianna. Saturday, 11th February 2023. Victim, Brianna Jai. Plan. Meet Eddie at Wooden Posts 1pm. Walk down to library, bus stop. Wait until Brianna gets off bus, then the three of us walk to Linear Park. Go to the pipe tunnel area. I say code word to Eddie. He stabs her in the back, and I stab her in the stomach. Eddie drags the body into the area. We both cover up the area with logs, etc. Both Eddie and Scarlett were charged with murder. Eddie would say, through his mother, that he had been peeing in the woods when Scarlett started stabbing Brianna, and he took absolutely no part in it at all. The blood in his clothing was from him checking to see if Brianna was okay. Scarlett would, of course, say the same about Eddie, that she took no, no part in it at all. The old blame Marino game. Scarlett, in fact, had a cover story ready. After the murder, she messaged Brianna's phone a number of times, asking if she was okay, saying she'd heard about a stabbing in the park. When she was questioned by police after being arrested, she had this whole shtick invented and was ready to rock, hoping the police would gobble it down. She said that, yes, they had met up, but then, Brianna had left the park on her own to meet a random man from Manchester. The day after the murder, she texted Brianna, Girl, is everything okay? Some teenage girl got killed in Linear Park. It's on the news everywhere. And why did you ditch us for some random man from Manchester? Like, what the F? That is so effed up. But the messages on their, on their phones just revealed everything. They had been planning a murder for months, and as I said, had made a kill list. Brianna and five boys. Three of the boys on that list were lads who had pissed off Scarlett's boyfriend. One of the guys was a rival for the affections of a girl that Eddie fancied that he liked. And then the other guy, Scarlett just didn't like him, thought he was a bit of a dick. They finally settled on Brianna. But one time Brianna had to cancel. Another time Eddie refused because it was a school night. Then they finally were able to lure her over. Two 16-year-olds, a boy and a girl, were charged with uh, Brianna's murder after, as you say, she was found uh, in a park not far from her home on a, a Saturday afternoon in, in February and uh, died of, of stab wounds. Uh, well, today, those, those two 16-year-olds appeared in court uh, here and one of those defendants entered a not guilty plea. Now but here's one thing, if you can believe it, that'll absolutely shock you. While in custody, Scarlett, who, she loves her little list. She made another, a second kill list, a kill list of staff in this custody center. Yep, she wanted to kill staff at the secure children's facility she was being kept at. The list was found by staff. During the trial, Eddie, selectively mute, was allowed to give evidence by typing his answers onto a computer, which would show up for the jury and be read out loud. During the trial, he did Sudoku puzzles and played with a fidget spinner. Some argue this was all an act, that he was playing it up for sympathy. Others say that he was traumatized by the murder he, uh, committed. At the end of the trials, Scarlett Jenkinson was sentenced to life with a minimum of 22 years. Eddie to life with a minimum of 20 years. Scarlett and Eddie, for Brianna's murder, you are to be detained at His Majesty's pleasure. As you know, that is a life sentence. I must also set the minimum time before you can be considered for release. But how long you will actually serve will not be decided today. You will only be released if, in the future, it is decided that you no longer present a danger. I don't want to dwell on the murder itself, but it was brutal. The injuries inflicted with the knife Eddie had bought a few weeks earlier were awful. 
Your motivation, Scarlet, was to act out your fantasies. The messages show you wanted to make a real victim feel pain and fear. Your actions after the event and what you have told Dr Church confirm you enjoyed the killing. Eddie, although your motives may not have been the same, you knew what Scarlett wanted to do and why. You understood her desire to see Brianna suffer. You actively participated in this brutal murder, knowing the sadistic motives behind it, and you cannot avoid the consequences just by saying you did not have the same desires. I find also that you, Eddie, were motivated in part by hostility towards Brianna because she was transgender. The murder was motivated by an obsession Scarlett and Eddie had. It's always thought Scarlett was the ringleader. They were going to kill, eventually. But also, the fact that Brianna was transgender bumped her up to the top of the list. Brianna had her struggles, more than her fair share, but she always put on a brave face for the world, always showed her happy side, and no doubt would have gone on to become a, a pretty amazing person. Instead, two psychopaths with the absolute darkest possible obsession you can have uh, ended that, in the process ending themselves. Scarlet for sure doesn't seem like a person who anyone should have hope for. If she hadn't done what she did, she would have done something. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's another list in wherever she is now. They both showed a complete lack of empathy. They knew exactly what they were doing and shared no remorse after the fact, demonstrating sheer arrogance. But thankfully, she may as well add herself onto that list because she won't be doing much now. She's already done enough. Thank you so much for watching. It uh, really means a lot to me uh, that you're here, as always. Um, you know the drill. Please, uh, oh, check out uh, the shirts. Shirts, last time of selling them, limited edition. The sale is ending like real soon because they're getting shipped this month, so please check it out. Also, check out the Patreon uh, for early access to videos and a heap of exclusive videos. And check out the That Chapter podcast with a new episode out every Monday. But you know what? Until the next soul video, which should be out on, like, Friday. Please take care of each other and yourselves, because I love you. Mike out.